Amber, Greg, Jamie, Juan, Mark, Mike. Good to have everybody in here. Good evening, Jamie. Well, we got a full house tonight. See some new names in here. Got the usual suspects in here too. Federico, good to see you in here too. Gary Carmen. Mark Mark. Two Marks. Kathy, Bill, Amber. Hola, Federico. All right, guys. I'm gonna go uh let me share. Yes, I went and got COVID tested today. I was around someone that tested positive and I don't know, it might just be seasonal allergies, but I don't have a fever, but I don't want to take any chances to get tested, but it's not going to come back for seven to 10 days. So I'm like, I'll be over it by the time it's, uh, by the time I find out if I had it. Yes. My dog has her toy over there. She's, uh, I mean, literally 15 seconds. I was running full speed down the hall, chasing my dog beforehand we we probably run a football field a month or a day per day i'm not kidding you 100 yards in the house uh that's how i try to stay in shape <laughs> uh uh so sharing we have the uh loss disclosure you guys can screenshot that and read it day trading blah 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 you can read the whole thing that uh it's a risky thing and a risky endeavor so let's go. I'm going to go over tonight some of, actually, let me shrink this back down again. Some of you guys that, um, one of the things you get in the 5K club, it's 60 bucks a year, guys. It's super cheap. Paul does two live trainings a month. You get to watch him go through the same process uh, going through. But one of the things you get is the spreadsheet of all of the levels uh, he calls them as sticky support and resistant zones. They're on here. So tonight I am going to take that. I'm going to put some of these zones on this chart. And let's see. on trading view. If you click this little button right up here, let me look over here. Kristen, Chris, is it Christine or Kristen? Bill, I'm good. Thanks for joining last week. That uh, I'm gl glad to have you here, Kristen. Jake, nice to have you too. That uh, so let me go over uh, again on how to draw these support and resistance zones. Now on TradingView, when you add our indicators on here, and if you go to my J Dub Tick Trader, uh, if I can on my face right there, profile. If you go to my J-Dub Trick, Tick Trader, you can see lots of videos uh, that are on here on how to set up the Trade the Fifth indicators, um, how to set up defaults for your 90, 140 pullback, stuff like that. Um, all of those things are in here. There's several pages of them. So let's get it back here. And then let's put on these zones. So when you click this button right here, it just makes that pane bigger. The other ones are still there. It just gives you more screen space. So we're on, let's go to ES. You know, it's my favorite. It's what I trade all the time. Christy. Okay, good to have you. Where are you, where are you from? We get people from all over the world around here too. All right, so on this list, and let me shrink this up here where you can see it. On ES, we have, all right, we're at 3168.75 right now. I'm not gonna go through and put all these zones on, but I'm gonna put this, the ones that were close to it. So right now, 
This is a temporary one Paul has in here at 31.55 to 31.60. Okay, so 31.55 to 31.60. You use a price range chart here. You notice I have a have it starred as a favorite. We got. I'm gonna go down here to 5K zones, W5T zones. And I am going to drop it. I, I don't try to get accurate on dropping it. I just drop it on the screen. All right. And then I right click it, hit settings, go to coordinates, and then I put in the coordinates. So then I just put in 3160. Instead of trying to be like accurate and put it on the chart, I'm like, I don't care. I just drop it on there. 3155. Once you put that on there, for right now, you have to lock it. Uh, right click it and then lock. Coming up in a new update, I'm working with TradingView on this. They're going to actually have it where you can set it as a default for those. So whenever I click that, click down, and these are different uh, openings that I put on here that you can save lock automatically on there. And I'll show you here in a second after we put a couple zones um, on here. So let's add some more, right click it and edit. Now we're gonna add 3207 to 320250. All right. Lock that, and we're going to put 32. Like I said, I just drop one anywhere on the screen, and then just go on there. 3254, 32, 54, 25, 32, and then I want to go below just so we can see how these uh, reacted before too. So boom, boom. Sorry guys, I talk to myself. I do it all day when I'm turning. My, I'm my greatest fan. <laughs> Lock it, and then let's do 3084. We had to go, uh, Bella and I had to go 90 minutes to the hospital that had a rapid test and then come to find out they were out of rapid tests. So basically we wasted half a day or an entire day really. But she was tired of riding around in the truck. Lock that one and then let's do one more. Okay, so we're going to lock these, and I believe I've got visibility. On visibility, you can go through and make them go off whatever time frames you don't want. So you could put like a zone that you only want to see on a daily chart and nothing else, and you can uncheck all of these, and then that zone will only show on a daily chart or vice versa. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory, or it's, it's super nice. Now what you can do in here, this is a quick tip I'm going to give you. You can click your object tree down here on the bottom right. All those price ranges we just put in here are the 5K zones. So you can literally just highlight over the one, oops, highlight over the one, hit your shift button, click the bottom one, and they're all highlighted. Click this folder, and it puts them all into a folder. Right click that folder, rename it. W5T 
5k zones. And now, whoop, now you can go in here and turn them all on or all off at one time. It's uh, way easier. Um, that way you can have a naked chart, not have anything on there and then put your zones on when you need them. Okay, so now that we have that on there, everybody knows the first thing that you do is you frame your chart. We're gonna go to daily chart, in a 60 minute. I do my daily for the these trainings in a white channel. And it's just so it's easy to see on the screen. Um, and then I do a 60 minute in red. So here's our daily. And then we're going to go down to a one hour. That one hour is respecting that daily channel really, really well. Let's zoom in here. All right, so we have a nice uptrend going on. I think it's, I don't know, I think it's short lived. The thing is, is when you're in the middle of the channel like this, who knows what's gonna go on. But uh, let me go to a 240 real quick and see where we're at on a 240. Yeah, 240 is done really well too. We just have this down channel right now and we're at the top of it. You, yeah, let's go to a 15 minute. Sorry, excuse me, one hour. We have this channel right here that's going down. Now I could draw one from, let's do this, 15 minute. I could draw it from where it touched the daily channel line up to where we're at. And that's, zoom in here that has respected it pretty darn well coming through here we bounced off that bottom channel line really really good now where we're at now who knows we could come up here tag that center channel line of the daily channel and then work our way back down that uh, we just don't know but we need to look for opportunities on because most most of you guys are not trading a big account where you don't have the money to sit on it and you know what I mean? You're not swing trading 20 contracts and holding on to them for five days. You know, you're getting in and out of the market. A lot of you also don't have, uh, Kathy, these time frames I started on a daily and I frame it in on a daily, which is right here. And I go from the pivot for whatever trend that we're in currently. So before we went up, and I'll just do this for you to help you out. If we were going down, I would have drawn a channel going this way. Notice how we respected that channel all the way down. And these channels, they're called regression channels. They're in, they're right up here underneath uh, the trend line section. You go all the way to the bottom, it's regression trend. Um, I don't need another one that's going to draw one here, but let me just delete it. Um, and if you right click it underneath settings, I like high, low, close divided by three. That's my favorite one, except for fourth wave pullbacks, I do close. And there's a video, I, it's underneath my profile for um, trading view. So the first thing you do is, I'm going to take that channel off. You just frame it on a daily. You want to see what is the big picture on a higher time frame. The daily time frame is pretty high. That uh, so we're looking on here. We have respected this channel very, very well since March 23rd, and it's now July. So we've got three months. It's been respecting it. So if we get to the top of the channel, more than likely it's probably going to come down. If we get to the bottom of the channel, like it did here, we're probably going to go up. Uh, no guarantee, but it gives us a pretty good eye. You're, if you get some kind of a signal that you're thinking about going short right here, you got to look at the big the big time frame and be like, uh, I don't know about going short. That we've respected this channel. We haven't popped outside of this channel, but you know, a, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, this one actually opened below the channel and then came back into it. 
So you just want to get an idea of what's going on. So let's go down to that hour and you want to go the current trend that we're in. Now, theoretically, this is from 626. So we have, I don't know, what is that, a week? What is the eighth? Yeah, it's about two weeks in here. So I like this channel right here. Uh, we've respected it. If you draw a channel and you have some crazy stuff way out of here and way out of here, you probably need to redraw it. Like you're not in a trend, uh, some kind of a trend. Now, technically, let's do, we could do one from here to here. And we're in a sideways channel that, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that because this is the current trend, but this is the trend from the 16th instead of the 26th. So you got 10 more days, two weeks of trading on there. Um, so really and truthfully, this point right here, 3207 is probably going to be, I don't know if we'll, I, I don't think we'll get, uh, no, 3207, we've already hit 3232. This center channel line, we may work our way back up into somewhere in that range right in here again. That's a, that's a fresh, fresh supply up in right in there. We should, should fall down. But anyhow, I like this current trend right here going up. I'm going to take this other one off, and we're going to focus on this one right now. We're going to drop down to 15-minute time frame. We're gonna see where we're at. Now let's put in our bias dots. And these guys that have, you guys that have not been in here. It's the same time zone on all the replays. Um, Jake, you'll just have to watch the, if you haven't watched the training video uh, that comes with them, that you watch multiple time frames, but you're trading off whichever one. You know, if you're trading off a of, five minute or a 15 minute. Now you're gonna to go to other time frames for confirmation to uh, see what's uh, like, you're gonna to go to the other time frames to confirm what you see on the other one. If you get conflicting stories, one says, no, we're going short. This one over here says we're going long and you can't get any confluence between them. You don't take the trade on there. Um, so, all right, so we're on a 15 minute chart. We're in here. Now let's turn on, let's just do bits for now. Okay. Now I, on my bits, I turn off these labels here. And I'm going to show you here. Labels. All right. It's these labels right here for yesterday's high, yesterday's close mid for the day, yesterday's low. Um, I don't like those on the screen because they take up too much space for me. So you just right click them, click labels, takes them off. That uh, I know if I see green that's high, I know red's low, um, and I know those other ones are important levels. So I don't pay attention to them that much. Now on our bits, one of the rules that you're gonna take a, one of the rules of taking a trade is when the cyan line, let me zoom in here so you can see this. When the cyan line crosses over the yellow, that is a signal to go, If in this case, go short, okay? These little purple dots in here are, let me blow it up and see a little bit better. These little purple dots right here are the point of control. So on this one, you need to be below the, the purple dots to take a short. We're below that. So there's one reason to go short. The cyan crossed over your yellow, two reasons to go short. Now look down here. This is your bias. And what your bias is telling you is, is there a confluence on the higher time frames for a short or a long? Green is long, red is short, yellow is indecision or change when it's going in between them. And if you notice, we went green, green, green. Even though we were going down right here, we still had green dots because the higher time frames were for long. Okay. Now, when this crossed over, 
we actually got the first red signal right here on this bar right here when it went down. But the cyan had not crossed over yet. And if you notice, pull all the way back up. Then the second bar opens. When the second bar opened, that's when the cyan line crossed over. Now, you, you could have gotten in this, you still would have been fine, but this is your entry point right here. So cyan crossover, one reason to go short. Purple dots, your point of controls, you were below those, two reasons to go short. Your higher time frame bias dots are red. You got your second one for red. Third reason to go short. Fourth reason to go short is your 535 oscillator here. If you look, the bars were getting smaller and smaller each one of these. So when it hit this one here, it was already there. Four reasons to go short. Now, your stochastic crossed over your 80% right here. You got your red arrow that it crossed over. Five reasons to go short. Now, I've got RSI on here. We don't put that. That's just a standard indicator from uh, on anything that an RSI right up in here made a huge pitch down that uh, that it's kind of like an early morning sign. Uh, I always say RSI is like the leading thing of what's going on with the market. It'll whip around, but it kind of gives you a, an early detection, three seconds to five minutes or 10 minutes. I don't know. It depends on what time frame you're on. But you basically have five reasons to take this short trade right. Now, if you did take it, 31.43 went all the way down to 31.26. So not caught 20 points, 17 points, it's a crap ton of money. Uh, that's out of there. Now let's add on roller coaster. And now your 15 minute time frame is going to be, you want to make sure that roller coaster is in the groove. So for instance, this is a perfect example right here. When we Let's make this bigger. When we framed this chart earlier on that 60 minute time frame, I told you we want to see the uh, overall picture of what's going on with the market. If you get a signal to go short and you're at the bottom of this channel and you look at it and you say, well, since June 26th to what is it, May or July 8th, We've, you know, we've pretty much stayed inside here. You know what I mean? Just went a little bit out. Well, if we went a little bit out, here is a roller coaster entry right here. Now, it never activated, but you're probably not going to take that uh, trade because you know that you're in this channel that we're not going to take it. Um, this one here, same way, it gave you a, a signal right at the bottom. It barely activated. I wouldn't have taken that one because we're at the bottom of the channel. Now this one right here was a nice one, 31.36, ran down below the channel to 31.25, so you got 11 points, 44 ticks. Uh, but guess where my stop loss is gonna be? Right on that channel line, right on the, the very bottom, because I know it's probably gonna come back, rebound up, look what it did. Came back down, retested it, took off all the way up, halfway up the channel, retested it again. Came up, retested it, look where we're at now. Um, this one here, cyan crossed over on your bits. You blow your point of controls, go down over here. You had yellow, 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 boom. You got your red dot. Your green is almost gone. So cyan, point of control, red dot. 535 oscillators getting smaller and smaller. You got your crossover a little bit before, but uh, stochastics is on its way down, five reasons, and your RSI cranked over right there too, going down. That you got six reasons to take that plus, that's just with bits, plus you have roller coaster. So roller coaster, you kind of, everybody says, well, which one do you use or which one's more important? They're all important. Um, that can you use them independently? Yes, I just showed you on bits how you could use bits to find trades. But there's extra confirmation. Like, for instance, I will not take a trade inside of a channel. In the middle of this channel right here, if I get some kind of alert, I just don't take it. 
unless there's a roller coaster move on it and I confirm it with fits, then I'll look at taking it because I end up getting hammered like this right here. Look where it just went. Just chopped everybody up right here. Took everybody out. I mean, really and truthfully, it's been chopping all the way across that uh, for quite a while. But this one was a good one. This one here was an awesome uh, move here from 3130 to 3171. I mean, that's a 41 point move. Uh, and the reason why this one is so good is bits actually got you in down here at 3117. Uh, 3130, you got an extra 14 points in there uh, from bits getting you in early. You had your yellow and then boom, you got your bias dot right there. Uh, and your oscillator right here is getting smaller, 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 indicating that a change is possible. You got your stochastic crossover here and your RSI came down, tagged the bottom and took off from there. Uh, that's, uh, so you, bits would have got you in at 3117. Roller coaster got you in at 3131. And then it stopped you out if you took the recommended stop out at 3163. Um, and that's how you guys knew to this. This um, kind of, it's harder on trading view because the coding won't allow us to put a hash mark across there on our TradeStation, NinjaTrader, and uh, Thinkorswim platforms. There's an actual hash mark that goes across and you basically just move your stop loss as it goes. Basically, it is the difference between this grayed out area here in the green. I don't know if the, uh, do you want to say it's a darker green or a gray. I call it gray. Um, and this light green, that, um, that yellow line runs right along on that stop out line too. That, uh, so basically, that yellow line is your stop out, and it stopped you out right here at 31.63. So that 32 points, that's a nice move there. Um, but before you take a roller coaster trade, where do you put your stop limit there in that way? All right, so if you're, where do I put my stop if I'm entering on this one? So on this one right here, this box is popping up early, okay? It popped up actually right here on this candle when the cyan crossed over that yellow this orange box was here. Now it won't have an entire box. It'll just have the green line up here for the entry and then the recommended stop loss. The recommended stop loss basically is just, it's at the pivot point is what that is. Now, depending on the size of your account, if you can't afford to have a stop loss like that in your trading plan, then obviously you don't want to put, use that as your stop loss. You got to put, you know, what's for your account. If it's a 10 tick stop loss, then you do it. My rule is when it pops out, okay, so it's this one right here activated. So if you took just roller coaster, it took off, it typically will retrace back, which it did, right? Let me blow this up a little bit more. It will retrace back, typically will go back inside the orange and then come back out. And then I will take it at, I call it the second uh, tier or second stair, step, whatever you want to call it. So my entry, if I was just taking roller coaster only, would have been at 3134. And it only went 33, it went three ticks negative on you. Um, that tends to be a safer um, entry for me. It just saves, it saves you from one of these like this that ends up pulling up in here, like, this one here, you would not get in unless you went below that number right there and it violated it right there. So you never, I would have never gotten in this one because I would have never taken that one. I always wait for it to come out first and then uh, you go on there. Um, so, but uh, once it takes off, I typically will keep my stop loss right underneath the entry line. Like when I say one tick uh, stop loss, two tick stop, like it's taken off, you know what I mean? It's moved five, six ticks out, seven ticks out. I'm gonna move it to uh, one tick profit to protect it uh, just in case if it comes back and stops me out. That way I don't have a loss. Now, I know that may not be 
uh, right for some people's trading plans, but that's what I like. I may have five trades. Uh, I may have four or five entries where I make $12.50 or 25 bucks, but I don't have a loss. And then when I get this runner that takes off and runs like a mother for 120 ticks, 140 ticks, I don't, I'm not subtracting out four losses that I lost 125 bucks on either. You know, it's, uh, you got a minimum. When you work on your losses, those are the most important ones to work on, not your winners. The winners are easy to find. It's keeping your money as the hardest part <laughs> that, uh, out of it. So that's what, that's what I would do. So when this takes off now, like I was telling you, the entry point, it takes off from there. Now, if I got in there at 31, 34, I'm going to put it down here at the entry line, um, 12 tick stop loss. But once it's five or six ticks ahead, then I move it to one tick profit and I leave it there. And I'll, I'll uh, yesterday I got stopped out five times, but I didn't have a loss. They were all, I think I had one 1250 loss that they were all like 1250 profit, 25 profit. Um, but then I had a nice 300 some dollar runner out of there, but I, out of that $300. Now, if I would have been paying attention to the computer, it was actually $800, but I was out of the room. Uh, but it, when I got back to the computer, it was at three, but I didn't have to minus off a whole bunch of losses uh, from taking stupid losses is what I call them. I hope I answered that for you. Let's see. How do you take the prices on long or stop on thinkorswim since it's blocking my candles? Um, Jake, we'll have to, uh, reach out to me. I'm going to give you my, I'm going to put my email address in here. And any of you that, uh, are on here that know me, you know, I will spend, uh, hours. I spent two hours with somebody last Saturday, uh, helping them out. Um, I'm, as long as I got the time, uh, now I got a bunch of stuff going on next week, uh, Sunday through Thursday. So, my, I'll be pretty limited on that, but um, before or after Sunday, before Sunday or after Thursday, uh, I can definitely help. But reach out and I'll do a private. I have uh, Thinkorswim. I don't use it very often, uh, but I can go in there and uh, kind of help you figure that out. Okay, so let's get back to this. Uh, now... Now we've got the, so we've got the 60 minute chart up here or channel. We've got a 15 minute zone. Uh, we've got roller coaster on here. Let's add in those 5k club uh, zones. Now look at this. Look at, look when I turn this on and off where they line up. You, now part of the rules is you do not take a trade going into one of the supporter resistant zones. So if you didn't have these zones on here, this trade took off down here, came back up, came back up, then came down and pulled back up again and then took off. Now, this one off the center channel line, that would have been the trade to take off there, but add on your 5K zones and you wouldn't have taken any of these right here because you were trading into this zone. This one pierced through, touched the center channel line, which is a good thing, but it typically rebounds and it did. And look where it went. It went right to the top of Paul's support and resistance zone. This one was uh, resistance that stopped up there and it pushed it back down. So once you got below that 31.55, you could have took your short and never went negative on you after that. So this is the importance of having your 5K zones on your chart and putting them on here. You guys, you, uh, Paul updates them every Sunday. So you don't have to go in here and draw all of these every single time. All you got to do is just come over here to your zones, uh, just drop them down, and you can go in here, add another one, drag it into uh, this group, lock it, and then you can turn them all on and off. So you can make – uh, important decisions. For instance, on this one right here, your entry was the bottom of the support and resistance zone for roller coaster. 
All right, now bits got you in at the top of the support and resistance zone. Now, if you want to be more conservative and you want to take it going out of there, which it did, never, I don't think, maybe went one tick negative, but took off out of there. But look where it touched and stopped and rebounded off of. You would have never, all right, instead of waiting until it for it to stop you out at 31.43.50, 31.32, that's almost 40 ticks extra that you would have got on this because you would have known, hey, this is probably going to run out of juice right here. Move your stop loss up right behind it. As soon as it touched that, my stop loss is going to be right behind it, taking it out of there. And look what it did. It bounced off of it, came back through, bounced off of it again, punctured through. Now, I wouldn't have taken this uh, roller coaster move right here because it's going into a support and resistance zone and it's the bottom of the channel. I'm not going to take it. Same way with this one. I'm not going to take this one because it's inside of the support and resistance zone and it's the bottom of the channel. Every reason not to take that trade. Now, going same way with this one, we're below it, but we haven't been below this channel for 10 plus days for more than just a little bit and it did less than 15 minutes. It was right back up into the channel and taken off. Uh, so let's go down to smaller time frame. So even though we were on 15 minutes, and pardon me, guys, I'm trying to not, uh, this cold's been whooping my tail in. So here's your 15 minute roller coaster moves. Now let's go down to five. Those same zones are on here. And we want to look at how has roller coaster been performing. So far, it's been pretty damn good that uh yeah one little one there but like i said i never take it till the second step so it never hit uh, same way with this one that's good 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 never uh, i would have never taken that one that uh you had too much indecision over here you didn't have a green dot to go long here on your bias so you like to have some correlation now, one thing you do have, though, is look at your cyan line on bits crossed over right here, and you're below your point of control dots. So point of control dots, one reason goes short. Cyan crossed over, two reasons go short. And you have this long run up, green, 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 boom, yellow, right where it crossed over. Three reasons go short. 535 oscillator, shorter, 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 shorter. Four reasons go short. Stochastic crossed over 80%. Five reasons go short. And this, these yellow boxes on our uh, false breakout is when it's going up, if you notice right here, it dipped back down but then took back off and went higher. This is what this false breakout is, what it's designed to keep you in the trade so that you don't prematurely get out and then it rebounds back up. But you got the okay right here that it went, the yellow box went away and the, the uh, stochastic crossed over with the arrow. So you've got five, six reasons to go short, plus your RSI took off down over a few candles before at the top. So it's just the momentum was going down. Now, whether or not you wanna take it into a support or resistance zone, because look how sticky this was. We touched it, bounced off, Touched it, came up, pierced down through it, came back up above it, and then came down. But your entry right here, you never went negative once. Bits will get you in a lot earlier to a trade. Now, let's do, and there's uh, many different ones on here, and I, I can go over here. Cyan crossed over. Um, this is a, a good example of how much earlier it got you in. This got you in at 31.40 or 31.33 instead of 31.39. Now, six points doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 24 ticks. That's, uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, and it's kind of confirmation because you've got your 5K support and resistance zones in here that we crossed over coming out of there that it's a good one to go. And look, look where this went later on. We went back up into that uh zone and look at it it held it couldn't break out of the nothing closed above it it wicked out above it but nothing closed above so it held came back up retested it again couldn't even get 
uh, couldn't close inside him at that time, there's your signal to go short, and there it is right there. Cyan crossed over, one reason. Point of control dots, purple, two reasons to go short. Your green dots right here for your higher time frames, boom, turn red, three reasons to go short. 535 oscillators, smaller, 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 four reasons to go short. Now your stochastic crossed over a little bit earlier, 20 minutes before, 25 minutes before, uh, but we're on the downhill stretch down, five reasons to go short, and then your RSI right at that point, look at it, it just went, boom, just fell off the face of the earth. There's six reasons to go short. Now, that's awesome, Jay. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're learning. Uh, yeah, uh, I do not like, all right, the Globex open at 5 p.m. Central Time. I do not like trading, unless it's Sunday and the market's been closed, uh, I'll trade that, the open, and try to get a bounce out of there if I can. But I wouldn't mess with anything until after 2 a.m. Uh, for the London European Open. Um, and then you have uh, London, then you have Tokyo at 3, Hong Kong at 3.15, uh, and then the American at 8.30 Central on those. Uh, so let's take off, all right, let me take, let me hide these 5K zones. Let's take off roller coaster and bits. And what time is it? 40, we got 18 minutes. Now let's work on Elliott Wave now, okay? So if you can't tell, I like roller coaster and I like bits uh, a lot. What, um, let me show you what roller coaster will find. I don't carry roller, I don't have Elliott Wave running automatically on my chart because uh, I have gotten to the point where I can visually see an Elliott Wave and like I can see one right here that this is a one, a two, this was a three, a four, and this was a fifth wave move. And then it turned into a fourth wave pullback. This was a three, a four, and a fifth wave, and then a failed fifth on the end. But let's uh, isolate. So now for me to isolate this one, typically on a roller coaster move like this, where you get a big long move, that is typically the third wave of an Elliott wave. Almost, I wouldn't say 99%, but a majority of the time, I don't even turn on Elliott wave until I see this on my chart. And then I know what's going on because I'll have my channel going on in there. And so I'm gonna go from this pivot low right here. Okay, this is where I'm gonna isolate. When you're using your Elliott wave, let's turn off uh, roller coaster. Turn on Elliott Wave, all right? To isolate, typically what you do is you go to the high or the low of the previous day or the higher low of the overnight session. Now, because I wanna isolate, uh, well, let's, let's just say, let's just do it this way. At 10 o'clock, 11, 12, duh, 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 so the higher low, this is going to be the low of the overnight session. That was at 1 o'clock in the morning. So on our indicators right here is your bar number. So if I hover underneath that candle, it is 20,756. If you can see it over there on the left-hand side right here. Hover right over there, 20,756. So you go up to your Elliott wave right here, click the sprocket, go to inputs, 20,756. By default, it's set at the number one. So it's calculating whichever chart you're on from candle number one. So we're on candle number 20,000. So if it's starting on one, it's crunching a lot of uh, computing power that you don't need to compute because you don't care about where Elliott waves happened a long time ago. You only want in the last basically 24 hours. Now, if you get to higher time frames like daily and stuff like that, um, you know, you're gonna have to go farther back on this. All right, so going on the five minute, we had a fifth wave move at one o'clock in the morning. And it was a very small one, came up, pulled back, took off up here. Uh, that one is almost not big enough for me to measure. 
Uh, now let's turn on the roller coaster. And what did I tell you? Look at, well, I told you I don't even have to look at the chart. And I know when I see a roller coaster move like this, it's typically the third wave move, which it was. It was a very quick fourth pullback, and then it hit the fifth target right there, and it was done. So, um, but that's how roller coaster comes in. That's how they work together, um, I think. Now, let's go back to where I was telling you I would isolate off of this low right here. That's 20,867. And the reason why is that is a major pivot for here. Really, truthfully, this is a major pivot, the last one before the move out. But I like this one because it gradually worked its way up. So we're going to go to the lowest one, 20,867. 20,867. I was going to say that sure looks like an Elliott wave to me. All right. So I thought this was going to be a third in here. I bet you if I isolate even more, this was a failed one here. All right, so this is where we're at right now, guys. That uh, on a five minute chart, we are, let me see where roller coaster is. I see roller coaster had a potential short going down and it didn't hit. Having Elliott wave, you know that this is a four play pullback. Now it could fail, it could go deeper in here. Uh, I don't like trading at night like right now. I do not trade at night right now. It, there's not enough volume, not enough trending, uh, and you can get hammered uh, on there. Uh, so let's measure this. When you – we all right, so we've isolated the wave count. We went over that. Now we want to draw a channel from the three, the top of the three, to the bottom of the wave four. So we're going to go over here to our regression channel. And if you go to my JDub Tick Trader profile on um, TradingView, I have videos on there on how to set these up as a default. But you just click the top of that candle to the bottom of that candle. Now, it's not going to be very big because it's a five-minute chart, so the channel is pretty small. You don't want to take this long out of here until we're out of here. Okay, outside of that channel. You also want to be on the out, these blue and red lines right here are the 6-4 moving average. You want to be above that blue 6-4 moving average. Now, not just because it pokes out of there. You want it to poke out of there, close, probably retest it, and then go. But going, looking on here, your higher time frame bias dots are green. Now, the only thing, though, that scares me on this one is your 535 oscillator is red down here. Now, this is for the fourth wave crown. And let me, all right, three is right here. You're going to do a Fibonacci retracement on, and this is saved underneath my profile, too on how to set the defaults for this 9140. You want to go from the wave four to the top of the wave three, which is right there. And that is, if you look at that, it's basically almost violated it. Uh, and then it did on the next candle. So even though this looks like want to go out this is a negative for me this is a negative ghost rider when i get this is one thing that i have experienced in i don't know a year and a half with uh using trade the fifth indicators if this fib is violated it gets chopped up or i lose money that so i'm not going to take this you take it from the zero line from the fourth wave pull it up to the high of the three which is Put this right here. You can see the three right here. You just drop the fib on the zero line, pull it up to the three. Now, technically, the fourth didn't violate it, but the next one it comes right back out and it does. I just don't. I don't have a good feeling on this one. Plus, it's nighttime. I don't like it. And 
your RSI, it's kind of messing around down here. Your stochastics kind of uh, bounced off. It's not pointing straight up. You did get your crossover right here though uh, on this one. But if you look, we touched that 6-4 moving average line, came back down. This might make it later on, but uh, I don't, these long ones like this, I do not take them. That uh, Paul always says, he recommends seven to 10 candles. Those are the best Elliott waves on seven to 10 candles. Now, one thing I will tell you also, I do not take a daily, a 240 or an hourly Elliott wave. Uh, now I'll look at them, but I will not take one because too much stuff can happen in a day on an Elliott wave on an hour chart. You know what I mean? It's just way too much. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the, when you drop down to the two, three, four minute time frames, you're going to find earlier entries. Uh, you'll find an Elliott wave on, let's see what this one is. No, that's a five minute one. Let's go down to four. Let's see what we see there. Now, um, let's take off Elliott Wave. There, there's not a lot really going on. It's not trending up or down right now. It's just kind of, eh, and that's why there's nothing there. So the indicator has done its job. There's nothing there. Don't force something that's not there. Now, if you turn on your roller coaster again, and I like to just go back and look, and it's like, where are we at on the 60-minute channel? And how is this four minute roller coaster doing? Not bad. It's uh, this one here, I think, is going to be a this one, I think, is going to come back down. I that's uh, I'm just guessing, but I think this one's going to make it uh, out of there. It's got to break through that 3162 50 25. Once it breaks through there, I think it'll drop down. Uh, probably retest that bottom channel line again. But other than that one, this one did pay off. It was a smaller one. You keep, like I said, keep your stop loss right behind it. Really nice one there. Really nice one there. Really nice one there. This one was on the center channel line, but never activated. This one took you down to the center channel line. Good one. Never activated. Never activated. Small activated, but if you follow my rule, wait until it goes to the next step. You're not going to take it. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Uh, good one. Good one never activated and then tie in your roller coaster with your bits and so if you see a roller coaster move let's find the one that didn't this one here didn't activate i'm not going to show you always a winning trade let's show you the losers of why you wouldn't have taken it all right cyan came up barely crossed over but if you notice you didn't get a green dot down here did you nope and immediately, as soon as it goes up there, you're right on that center channel line. If you didn't have that 60 minute channel line, you'd have no idea that you were gonna have resistance right here. Like if you didn't have that channel, let's uh, take that line out. If you didn't have that center channel line in there, you'd have no freaking idea that there was gonna be resistance here, 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 none of that. So, I mean, to me, I don't see how anybody could trade without channels. You have to have a channel. And you have to uh, update them. You can't just leave. I, I have been bad about leaving a channel on for like, say, a couple days because we'll typically go back into the channel again. Um, but what I like to do is draw a new channel from the 2 o'clock uh, European Open to the 8.30 Open and snap that channel. And then um, that'll kind of give you an idea of like, what's going on in the current groove of things of where it's at. All right. So let's, let's look at your questions here. Let me see what I got. And I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I got not yelled at, but I had a couple of people tell me that I got too lost on questions last week um, where I didn't get to go through my stuff. So I, I tried to go through and show you what I, what I do and then we'll answer questions now. Yeah, you can use whatever time frames you want. Uh, now, 
I don't, I'm not going to make the, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm not going to use a one minute chart that uh, now on a two minute chart, if I see, let's see what we got on here. All right. This has a potential long on a two minute for roller coaster. Three minute has a potential long. Four minute has a short. All right. And on your bits, this green line is the recommended entry. This is your stop loss. And then this is target one, two, three, and four. You're going to move your stop loss up behind it. Uh, I don't pay attention to these as much uh, because I'm usually, I have my channels on. But we have conflicting stories here. Two minute, three minute, say long. Four minute says short. Five minutes says short. So you have two saying one way, two saying the other way. Guess what? You're not going to take any of them. That, uh, you're not going to take it. Now, having a big run up like this on this five minute, typically they turn around and then run back down again. Like, look right here. They had a run up, turns around, run down. Run down. Let me see if I can find another one. When they're a lot of times when they're trending, you'll have them back to back. Like this one was one down. It came up, stopped out, gave a new one to go up. This one probably will be a new one to come down on it. Yes, there is a package, Amber, where you can get all three. Uh, send me a message. You've got my email on there. Uh, you can uh, lease them on TradingView monthly, quarterly, yearly. Um, send me an email. I might be able to get you a special on it. If you got, if whoever's new in here, let's see. Yeah, Tim, it's, I get lazy too. That, I mean, it, the one thing with me is I'll tell you all, I'm like, uh, I'm not some uh, super trader dude. That uh, I go through the same problems you guys have. Thanks, Jade. I appreciate it too. Yes, that. Uh, let me show you on. All right, let's go over to. If you guys have time. All right. Roller coaster future. All right. Here is the roller coaster uh, smart list. That this, I believe it's one ninety seven a month for this. Now, right now, it's not trending at night. Like I said, I do not take trades in the evenings. That This gives you the overall win rate for the contract. Uh, now, they do carry that over from the last contract to the new one, and it just adds the wins or losses to it. Uh, that's on there. Now, you're not going to just take a trade because this says go long on whatever. This is, uh, what is that, natural gas? RTY. Let's go to RTY. 1115. Let's go back over here, RTY. And that was a five minute. Let's go back to 1115. Let's undo 11. Yep. So here's your, so you got a roller coaster long at 11.15 a.m. It said entry at 14.13.20, trailing stop at 14.20.39. Now, it's not going to print this until after it takes off. Uh, once it has printed this trailing stop line here, that's when this is going to show up right here. Like, if you notice right here, there's nothing there uh, because it didn't hit long enough. Uh, it didn't go long enough to be able to hit it. So 14, 13, 20, which should be right there, right there. Now, if you follow my rule where it comes out, look what it did. It pulled back in here, chopped around in here, and let's make it this, let's make this one bigger. Chopped around in there. And the cyan did cross over, but it uh, crossed over here. I uh, gave you a nice run up, but then crossed back over again, crossed over again, crossed over again. That's just chopping you up uh, to pieces. 
one cyan cross over there. But if you follow my rule of taking the long after it goes after the second step, it never went negative on you from there, from 14, 14. And you could have, you know, wherever you wanted to get out of there, if you took the recommended stop loss at 14, 24, uh, that's $10. That's uh, times, that's a hundred, that's a thousand ticks, $5. That's, that's five grand. Five grand on RTY. That's a, that's a big old trade. Defined a temporary zone. Uh, it's a new, like, all right, on the, let me see here. Let me find it. What did I do with it? All right. This is the temporary zone, and that's where they're on there. It's whether or not they hold. If they get retested, Gary, uh, and they prove that they're a good support and resistance zone, then they turn to blue and yellow or new. So on Sunday, you log in, you look at chart. If you don't have any yellow ones on here, you don't have anything to, you don't have anything to put on there. There's no new ones to put on. But if you look over here on NQ, you're like, okay, I got one zone to put on. So then you go back to your chart, click your object tree down there. You got your, uh, whoa, oh, wait, hold on. I got to go back to ES. I don't have the uh, zones on that one. So on your 5K zones, you could just click the down. You could add that new zone that's on there. And let, here, let me just show you real quick. Let's just say I added this one. Okay. You can just go over here and grab it and drag it down into here and drop it. And it now you can lock all of them. And then you turn them all on or off. Now I'm going to remember to take that one out because it's not a real one. Uh, so, but that's how you just make better decisions from there with those zones. And like, for instance, this, uh, roller coaster short right here, if it comes down, it's probably going to hit this and get some resistance. One, there's a, a, a tipping point right here, uh, pivot and support and resistance zone there. So I don't know. I just, it's, we've hit it several times down over here. So probably not going to take that one even and look at, like I was saying, two minutes, three minutes, say go long, four and five, say go short. I don't even know what, uh, what's 15 say. 15 doesn't have one right now. 30 minutes, 30 minute. We've actually been in a long on a 30 minute. On, on there but like i told you i don't take hour long uh ones now the hour one has activated off there i just get burned on there's too much that can happen in an hour um uh, in the market way too much uh i i like these on you frame your chart on a daily frame it on an hour drop down to your 15 minutes uh, and then put your 5k zones in there and then start looking at your bits bias, uh, dots, uh, your roller coaster. And when you see a long move, then, you know, Hey, I need to look at isolating Elliott wave. I didn't do a lot on Elliott wave this week, guys. Um, next week I'll, I'll go more heavy on Elliott wave first, and then we'll go into this later on. You're welcome, Gary. Everybody, uh, thanks for coming out tonight. And I mean, I know everybody's got uh, lives and this, that, and another going on. Um, I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to hang out with me. Um, anything you need, um, just reach out. You guys got my email in the message there. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, I haven't had a fever at all. So I think I'm good, but you know what I mean? You better be safe than sorry. Uh, you get the, uh, Edith, you get the zones underneath um, the 5K club. It costs you 60 bucks a year and then $5 for each time that you attend a live training. Paul does two of them a month. Last month, you got one for free. Uh, you didn't even have to pay the five. Uh, so if you don't attend it, you can watch the replay of it 
uh, and you don't have to pay it. But for the five dollars, you get the spreadsheet that you can download right there. And then you've got over here, you also have your risk calculator. You can, um, I didn't go over that on Elliott Wave. Uh, we'll go over that so that you know whether or not the risk uh, to reward is enough too for it. But that that's part of the 5K club is included in that. But reach out to me too if you want and I'll answer questions for you on that. Yeah, and Kathy, don't forget, reach out and I'll, uh, the, the same process is the same for think or swim. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, it might be a different way to get there. The only thing with think or swim compared to any other platform, the reason why I absolutely love, love, love trading view is the ability. Uh, I mean, one, I'm on a browser. I don't have to have a windows computer. I'm a Mac guy. So, uh, I hate despise windows. Uh, but having the ability to be able to turn all your zones on and off, all right? Or you can go over here and turn on uh, Elliott Wave. I can have turn on my volume profile if I want to confirm, you know, maybe an entry or something. But I can easily go over here and turn them all off so that I have a completely clean chart that like I can go over here and turn my trends off and I'm nothing on there that uh, that and it works on your phone it is phenomenal on the iPad now their app works really good but I like uh, you cannot trade live on the app but if you log in through your browser um, you can place a trade or uh, at least with amp futures that I'm with uh, you can place a trade or uh, you can move your stop loss. You got to double tap it on your iPad. You can move your stop loss up. Um, there's a lot of, it's a phenomenal platform and I can save this, go up here. Uh, it auto saves after I think like two minutes, I can log out, log into another computer and it's exact, everything's there. And when I get on my iPad, every single thing that is here in this object tree is on my iPad. So it's not like some of the other platforms where it specifically saved your computer. And then like I had one of my buddies, John Garland, we changed his RAM memory out on his computer and on NinjaTrader and everything was gone in his machine ID. So then we had to get reauthorized the machine. We're, you don't have any of that with here. That, uh, it's a super smooth platform. But all right, guys. Awesome. Well, you all have a good night, and I appreciate you hanging out. That uh, We'll talk to you later.